Welcome to the Mail Day with Bearded Tinker. Let's open up some more packages. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we dive into today's Mail Day with Bearded Tinker, I really would like to thank all the members of Bearded Tinker YouTube channel for their contribution. Thank you very much because your contribution means a lot. Now let's see what packages we have for today. MRB028A. I think I know what this is, but this title doesn't help me. If this is what I think, then these are the voltage regulators for the quick LED boards. And yes, they are. Okay. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and the headers and the pins are soldered on so I just have to separate them. Oh, okay, that's even better than the last time. Let me open the bag. Let me put my anti-static wrist, yeah, right. What this does, it, it steps uh, down voltage from 12 volts to 5 volts so you can use 12 volts to power supply your LEDs and 5 volts to control the electronics or ESP that is on the Queen LED board. Last time I ordered those, it came in a, I don't know, it was five boards together or something like that, and you had to solder those legs. This is the web listing for the DC to DC converter. I'm buying those mainly for the Queen LED Diguna board. By using this DC to DC converter, I'm able to power my Queen LED Diguna boards with both 12 volts and 5 volts. I bought it from the Shenzhen IC station, Co Limited. Store has 99.4 positive feedback on the AliExpress. At the time of the purchase, this DC to DC converter cost was. 96 cents, so it's a little bit more expensive now. When I bought 10 of them, the total cost was $13.65. I haven't used the boards outside of Queen LED Diguna project, but on the other hand, it's a reasonable option if you have power supplies that work with the 12 volts and you need stable 5 volts to power your Arduinos or ESP boards. They are very small, uh, compact, and from the testing that I've done, they worked pretty well. Let's check the next item. And let's look at this package. Remote adapter. I really do not know how they think of the names. I think I know what this is based on the tracking number. And to be honest, I didn't expect it so soon. But on the other hand, you really want to get this item as soon as possible and not during the winter. Because this is... Well, this is Xiaomi Mi Mosquito Trap or Mosquito Repellent. Hmm, how do you open it? I know you turn it on like this. There should be a way to open it, and I know that because you have to, ah, here, because you have to insert two batteries here, and also um, this is the fan, here you have to put this, let's call it uh, mosquito repellent, not killer, but repellent. So this is the net that has repellent inside it he, it here has also battery and it this is used to track the time the sensor was turned on let me insert it okay like this and now i just have to add two batteries here to turn it on and Yes, this will be my mosquito repellent for the summer. Well, at least test version, since I only have one. Why this version? Because this version is a smart version, 
and everything is better with the Bluetooth. You can see here the Bluetooth sign. You can use the Mi Home app to control this device. You can turn it then, for example, for six, eight, nine hours, so that during the night the sensor, the, the repellent works, during the day it turns off. It should be sufficient for a small room. It can even work on the outside, according to the manufacturer specification, but a range of this repellent would be, of course, on the outside much smaller. And this is great because I'm going on a vacation and I will take this one and then I will test it with my kids. You have to have placebo subject and the real subject, so one of the kids will get this in the room and we will see who will be bitten by the mosquitoes. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, I also hope to get this working with the home assistant. So, if all goes well, after I return from the vacation, there could be a video on if this is efficient or not, and also if this can be connected with the home assistant or not. Let's check the web listing. This is Xiaomi Mia mosquito repellent. I have to mention that the video itself was recorded on 30th of July, and that was the day before I was going on my vacation, so I did manage to use this uh, on the seaside, in the area where there are a lot of mosquitoes, and I was pretty happy on how it's working. In a closed space it works great, we didn't have any mosquitoes in the apartment itself when this was turned on. If you have large space you would have to have multiple uh, devices, I only had one for the testing. I also installed it inside Xiaomi Mi app so I can program it. Um, as I said I have this smart version, this one has Bluetooth, the other one is basic, it doesn't have Bluetooth. And I program it such a way that it would turn on each night at 7 p.m. and turn off at 6 a.m. The price currently is a little bit lower than it was when I bought it. I paid it $12.67, so it's a $1 cheaper now. There was also cost of delivery. I think that I did it on purpose because I went for the AliExpress standard shipping to ensure that I have it on time for my vacation. So the total price I paid for this repellent, and it, this includes this smart box, one repellent itself, and the, let's call it expedite shipping, was $14.86. This was brought from the Mia Smart Home Shop, which has 96.7 positive feedback. I previously did purchase a couple of things from that shop. I'm pretty happy with everything they sent. It was working great. The repellent itself didn't arrive in the original box, but on the other hand, who cares? I mentioned in the recording when I opened up the box, and it was two months ago, that I want to integrate it inside Home Assistant. I only just now started to play with it. It is possible to integrate it via the Bluetooth, but I think that you will not be able to control the repellent itself with the integration. You would just be able to pull data in terms of, I think, it, if it's working or not, if battery is low or not, and things like that. I will definitely buy more units, I think um, two, maybe even three, and also some spare, how they call it, mats or repellents themselves. Let's check the next item. Let's look at this. It says expansion board module. Two cents. Let's check what this is. Uh, maybe I should go and put my hazmat suit on, because this is iron chamber. Okay, so yeah, caution, contains radioactive material, iron chamber, legs are protected here. Okay, well, yeah, I have to be quiet because I don't want... What's this? Uh, I bought it to test my Geiger Miller counter. Uh, this is the iron chamber. It contains radiation, but it's below uh, anything that can be, uh, let's say, remotely called radioactive or dangerous. So I will be using this if I manage to get this Geiger Miller counter to test if it's working. Let's check the web listing.
This is the web listing from the store where I bought it. And as you can see, currently the item is no longer available there. I've been posting a couple of links where you can probably find it on AliExpress. The cost of the item, since you cannot see it here, was $1.12. But I paid extra shipping, so total for the item was $5.21 for one of those iron chambers. There is really no need for you to buy this item for the Gargan Miller counter, but as I mentioned in my video, I did have a problem with the kit itself, so I wanted to make sure that the kit itself was working correctly, and in order to do that, I wanted to, let's call it all that, provoke more ticks from it, and best way to do it was of course to provide some external ionization, and this was the easiest way for me to be sure to have some kind of ionization and on the other hand to be sure that the ionization itself is not huge or not too big. Yeah, I really do not know what I'll be doing with this ion chamber, since I do not need it anymore. Let's check the next item. Cable and cable. Cable square. And this is Cable Cable. So, what this is, this is USB to USB-C cable, magnetic, but this one should support also data transfer. And if you can't guess for what this is, this is for Liligo, Titigo, Hygro plant sensor. So what's the general idea? As you know, uh, Pastor did a custom firmware for the board that supports MQTT and nicely works with Home Assistant. Uh, he also designed a box, 3D printed box. And in the box there is a place where you can plug this magnetic connector on the board. Since the case then needs to be closed, this is used so you can recharge the board by just, you know, connecting it with the magnetic uh, cable. And I tried to find the same type or the same shape of the connector, but the cable should also support data connection. And why is that? Because if you want to flash a new firmware, uh, you can keep the 3D printed box closed, protecting the board, and you can still use this to program the board with the new uh, firmware. Let's take a closer look. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not. I think it's out of focus. Let me just... Let me try to focus. Note to self, next time bring glasses. So, as you can see, this connector is a little bit different. It has, I think, four or five rings. Let me switch back to autofocus. It has, yeah, it's not helping. It has four or five rings and a lot of pins. And it enables you not to just recharge the board, but also to reprogram it. This item was bought from Hopelf store. Hopefully this is pronounced like that. The store itself has 96.5 positive feedback. I did bought this cable, I also ordered one additional cable and some more plugs. So when I, I think I now have um, at least five plugs, all type C and two cables. Before we go any further with this cable, I want to clarify something. I did manage to burn one USB port on my computer and also I did manage to burn at the same time one of my TGGRO high grow boards at least the charging part of that board. And the reason was I messed with the connection. These are pretty strong magnets. If you get the plug near the cable, it will automatically connect. But I did print custom 3D case for this, for the TTGrow sensor to be able to use those plugs. And since I misaligned my box, I was able to forcefully make connection between the cable and the plug, and I think that this resulted in a short with the pins 
touching something that they shouldn't touch and I, as I said, burned my report and the board itself. So you have to be very careful on those cables. Uh, this is my experience. I did use cables after that for charging on the another computer or just to test if everything is working or not and they did work correctly but as i said i was able to misalign the connectors and that did result in the usb port on the pc to burn i bought the one meter type c cable and the plug and paid it three dollars and 99 cents currently it is selling for three dollars and 71 cent so hurry up beside cable like this i also have one simpler that only has two connection points for the plus and minus and i can use that cable or i use that cable for charging only and let's look at the last item for today integrated circuits uh, this is not what i've been waiting for how do you like my scissors one two three four five and are they same hopefully I ordered the correct ones let me zoom in so this is ESP8266 and I have five of them everything looks okay nice shiny d1 minis okay okay so why is esp8266 and y5 because a couple of months ago i ordered four and i don't think that i have any of them anymore let's check my stock uh, this is one of my boxes and here I uh, keep usually sensors and electronic stuff more or less. So we have here DC to DC converters, logic level shifters, also logic level shifters, PR sensors, gas sensor, uh, bug boost converter, but this part here is important this one should be filled with the esp boards and this is all i have left from the esp uh, family of boards so one esp32 cam one esp let me look like this esp12f let me zoom in so this is ESP12F, uh, this is the ESP W Room Room 32, so this is the ESP32 board, only one left. And this will be used to fill this box once again. I still have to order ESP32 boards, so more boards like this. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing with them. I don't know if I'm losing them or throwing them away in, in a garbage or whatever. But they just somehow end up missing in action. I do have a couple of... What I have? A Geiger counter. Uh, I have a CO2 meter. I have a lightning detector. I have two DIY BMS boards. But still, I think in the last year I bought at least 20 of them and yeah, they just somehow disappear. Okay, let's check the web listing and I'll refill my box. This is the web listing for the ESP8266 boards. Last time in, uh, I think it was either the last or the video before that, um, I showcased one of other packages and included ESP12F boards. 
Uh, thank you for all the comments about that. Yeah, I know in the meantime, since the recording of the videos and everything, I did use those boards and I did read up on them also. But those here are ESP8266 boards. I bought five of them. Uh, at the time when I ordered them, the cost of the board was $1.74. So the same as it is current. For the five boards with the shipping, I paid a total of $12.91. I still have a couple of those boards left. I think two or maybe three even. The next project you will be able to see them, I think, will be the uh, MQ4 sensor. This is the uh, gas sensor. And I will be hooking up that sensor to this board uh, and together with the ESP Home, adding them to Home Assistant. The boards themselves are cheap enough. What I usually do when I test the project, even after I stop using that project or uh, archive it, let's call it like that, I leave the boards attached because you probably are aware of that when you put something together after a couple of days or weeks of tinkering when you want to go back to that project half a year or a year later you will pro you will probably forget what you connected and why you connected so leaving those boards hooked up to the modules itself is a great way to not forget what you have done and also since the cost of the boards is less than two dollars you can always have a bunch of them as a spare and just use the new board for a new project. Those boards were bought from the All Electronics Trading Company. I previously also ordered additional boards uh, like ESP32 room boards and I think those ESP12F were also from the All Electronics Trading Company. And this is it for this Sunday's Mail Day with Billy Thinker. I hope you find something useful. If you did find something useful or you like this video, please give me a thumbs up because it means a lot to me. If you have any kind of a comment or a question in regards to the items I bought today or some possible projects I could do with them, please reach out to me on the Discord server or leave a comment here in the comment section of the video. If you yourself know of something that can be bought on the AliExpress or somewhere else on the internet, send me a link and I'll try to see if I can fit it in my home. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future updates, and I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.